Star seeds are the guardians of Terra who hold the knowledge of our ancestors. They are the inner earth beings that come to guide us with their wisdom. They are the enlightened beings from all over the galaxies that come to Terra like comets of light. They are the pioneers, the way showers, and the architects of a new world. One built upon integrity, unity, and love. These are their stories. Join us as they share their journey of hope, as they break down paradigms and limiting beliefs, as they share their challenges and struggles to fit into the very society they are here to shift. The good, the bad, the everything. This is a journey of a starseed. Right. Well, hello and welcome to my channel today. I am excited for our journey of a starseed series part four today, episode four. I have a very, very special guest and I'm so honored uh, to have actually just met Susan uh, for the first time. Um, and I've invited her on the channel today because I have a large following that um, are, have, are autistic families and they have a lot of questions. And although we're working away from labels, um, I wanted to bring forward Susan today because she is a mother of a of an autistic child um, who's actually a, a much older now, but um, and she has a, a magnificent story and she is taking the information that I have been giving uh, to a whole nother level of explanation. And this is why I am really um, intrigued with all the information on, on Susan's journey and her website and her daughter, Sam, and her journey. So I invited her on today so she can uh, tell us a little bit about her journey and, and explain to us a little bit what's with what's going on um, with the autistic, uh, the autist collective, um, as, as she calls it. And so uh, welcome, Susan, today. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Wanted to be here yes. with you. Yes, I am. I've been waiting for this conversation for, for a couple of weeks now, and I've been researching. So Susan has a website, Moon Oros. Dot one is right behind uh, on on the screen here that you can see, and I love that you call it revealing the jewels of autism. So most people that know me, I don't need to give a background on on my work with delabeling uh, children, uh, but I f I find it very fascinating your journey with with Sam. And so tell uh, tell us a little bit about how everything got started and, and a little bit of a background, and then we'll get into some really very uh, important topics. Okay, well, uh, yeah, as you can see, um, Sam, Samantha or Sammy is my daughter um, in the background. She's the inspiration for our website and uh, a great deal of what we of what we do. So, um, you know, we call it Moon Oros Dot One because that's my middle name or and my last name um, Dot One. When we started the site, uh, we, she was younger, and you know, we wanted to kind of keep her protected under our our, our wings, so to speak. And I know what Sherry means, you know, we've gone back and forth. Do we use a label? Do we not use the label? Um, and I think in by the end of this decade, we are going to kind of outgrow uh, the label, but um, it does kind of, for now, break people's mindsets about what um, autism is. And I certainly had those biases myself. So um, just to get into a little bit about background, I'm the mother, my husband and I are the mother of three children. Um, our oldest, Christopher, is uh, 26 and he's diagnosed with Down syndrome. Um, Sam is Samantha or Sammy is, I, I kind of go back and forth and call her Sammy or Samantha. She is our middle daughter, um, going to be 24 this year. And we have a younger, younger son who uh, is gonna be 22 this year and he's quote neurotypical. So, you know, we've had the full gamut of these different, very different uh, individuals and different quote levels of uh, physical functioning. Uh, I would say my husband and I are both very, you know, we're very 3D mindset. 
Um, so when Sammy was uh, diagnosed at about 28 months, um, you know, got her into the early interventions and she had, uh, you know, the, the, the full range of treatment of, uh, quote, traditional treatment of uh, um, speech and language therapy, occupational therapy, all those things. She would say some words, we would hear words from her off and on, but then we would never hear them, you know, again. So this went on for, you know, many years and still to this day at times. Um, and again, we were very stuck in 3D mindset, you know, it's education and, um, you know, you have to learn your ABCs and, you know, the developmental milestones, all those things, we were really caught up in that stuff. Um, so uh, my awakening didn't start, um, well, in a sense, it started in 1995 when I met Yeshua in a sense, but that was a, that's another kind of story. I won't really go into that right now. Um, but uh, in uh, 2008, I was uh, diagnosed with breast cancer and um, that was a real uh, eye opener for me, you know? So I went through the traditional treatments, you know, I did the full gamut, the really harsh treatment, uh, chemotherapy, um, radi radiation, uh, the whole bit. So, um, you know, I wondered what, is this trying to tell me, you know? Um, and so uh, in 2009, I remember uh, in the summer or while I was still going through radiation treatment at the time, um, like I start, started seeing symbols and uh, I'd heard about Reiki a few years before and then finally found uh, a Reiki master and um, God pointed me to how to get a Reiki attunement. And so, you know, I got the attunement and that kind of opened uh, kind of the flood doors and, uh, you know, started seeing lots of angels and, you know, there were still symbols coming in and all kinds of things happening. So Sammy was what, about nine, she was about 10 years old at the time. So, um, and what I kept hearing was that uh, I'm not whole, I'm not whole, I'm not functioning in wholeness. Um, and so when I thought about that and you think about what uh, cancer tumors are, you know, they're, they're your own body cells that have forgotten they're part of the whole system, you know, and they start going off on and reproducing themselves. And, you know, eventually they, they kill the host, you know, what can kill the host. So I thought that was an interesting um, thing that was uh, conveyed and, um, uh, but still kind of being a 3D mindset at the time. Um, when I got the Reiki attunement, I was really excited and I thought, all right, I'm going to heal Sam, you know. Uh, Chris, our oldest one with Down syndrome, you know, he's much more social. I mean, he's, he needs a lot of assistance as well, but he's more social. Um, and uh, I felt like Sammy kind of being more detached, um, that she was more, quote, vulnerable in the world, um, you know, and that's that's one of the fears of all us parents, you know, with uh, these very, uh, very uh, challenged children as we're raising them is what's going to happen to them in the future. So um, I still wanted to fix her, you know, I had to fix her because, <laughs> you know, she can't go to through life like this. She had, uh, you know, extreme behaviors would head bang, um, start yelling for no reason, or we thought for no reason at the time, and unexplained reasons, you know, to us. So uh, it was interesting, because you know, I coded to Reiki on her or something, you know, I'm like, all right, we're going to do some work on you, you know, and I kept seeing these other things. Um, so I kept seeing like, you know, one time she was showing me like the world is spinning, you know, the whole world just spins around me. I can't make sense, sense of it. Um, and then another time uh, uh, I would sit down and I would see all these, I started seeing all these uh, butterflies and divas and, you know, fairies and, um, you know, it was like another, she was showing me like another aspect of where she, uh, taps into where she, you know, exists. And so, um, every time I would try, I would be shown something different. It would be a completely different, you know, you're going off in a different direction, you know? So, 
It's like not my agenda. <laughs> you know, you can't have your own agenda, as you know, exactly. Sherry. Right? Yeah. Exactly, when you go yeah. To, yeah. When you go to do energy work, it's like, all right, let me be guided because you know, yeah. you the, even um, a person come in with an intention of what they want to do, what they want you to work on, and then you're like guided somewhere else. You know, it never works out that way. You have to just, you know, be open to whatever comes. Yeah. 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 Because it's it's you're being guided you know by your soul you know what you you're going to be shown so um these kinds of things kept happening and um simultaneously you know um i was you know awakening more and more uh and my guides had said we tried to get your attention before like in the 2005 2006 7 time frames i had no idea about all this ascension business going on you know we were trying to get your attention but we couldn't get your attention um and now, actually, I know kind of why, you know, I was kind of shut down. There were things that happened to me before birth and um, in my childhood. I didn't know at the time, but I won't, you know, I won't go into that right now. But because um, they try to block star seeds from awakening is what it comes down to, you know. Uh, so people yeah. who are sexually abused, I mean, there's, you know, those kinds of traumas, they shut star seeds down and there's, you know, been, quote, an agenda. Yeah, yeah. they're targeted greatly. Yeah, they're targeted a, a lot. So, um, uh, so you know, I was having trouble during you know, what was going on. But, um, you know, I started having these feelings. And luckily, I made a friend who was really metaphysical, much more so than I. And um, we started talking more and more and getting into some of these books and things going on. And then we started finding websites and people who were um, channeling and doing these other things. And, and, you know, I was like, you know what? I can relate to what they're talking about because that's what I'm feeling, you know? Um, so, uh, you know, that's when I kind of, it was around the 2011, 2012 timeframe. Um, you know, meanwhile, like, I'm like, you know, talking to stars, you know, uh, constellations, <laughs> you know, um, these other galactic beings are showing up, uh, angels are showing up, you know, and, you know, you think you're losing your mind. Uh, yeah. Yeah, especially at that time, you know, we're talking 10, 12 years ago, um, even then, um, you know, it was kind of, you were kind of out to lunch if you were sorry, talking about those kinds of things. And you, you didn't dare talk about it with other parents, you know, in your area or to yeah. your kids' therapists, right, or their teachers. Yeah, that um, put you on medication. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, unfortunately, I managed to stay away from medications, I, you know. Um, that's a good thing. I, I was like, no, I'm not, I'm not going on antidepressants. I don't need antipsychotics. Um, you know, but, uh, so fortunately I, um, you know, we continued on this path and there I am trying to heal Sammy and Sammy's having explosions at times, which, you know, I didn't understand. Um, and, uh, you know, banging her head at times. Um, so around 2013, I don't know if you've heard of her, but, um, her name is Susie Miller and she, is one of the first ones um, working with these quote beyond verbal um, autistics, so to speak. Um, and so I found her uh, watching an interview and um, she was talking about these kids and what they're here to do. And I thought, oh my gosh, I thought I was crazy, but um, here's somebody talking about it. So I uh, enrolled in her courses at the time, what she was doing. I don't think she does it quite the same way. I don't know. I'm not sure what she's, how she does it anymore, but, um, uh, you know, it kind of expanded my ability to connect to Sam in a, in a different way. Um, so that was, you know, 2014-ish, 15, in that time frame. Um, so Sam was still in school at the time. She was going to school and still having these um, explosions at times at, at school too. Uh, so and we managed to keep her off on medication. We don't, we don't give her any, and they don't really seem to work any. We tried one to kind of calm her down, but, um, uh, and, and no judgment on parents who, who choose that route. I understand if it's very difficult and that's what you have to do, you know, to uh, maintain your sanity. Um, and it also depends on your family system and uh, a spouse, if you have a spouse or not, uh, how supportive that person is and what kind of support systems you have around you and those choices that you make. And I say that because I have a master's in social services and so I understand 
that everyone is um, has a different circumstance in their life and different stressors. And so, you know, no judgment if you do um, feel like you do have to give your child medications or if you're on medications, really. Um, so anyway, um, you know, these things start, you know, continue to happen. Uh, and I thought, well, she's not, quote, functional in the 3D realm, meaning um, she was still, her goals were still like the same goals, you know, can they touch the yellow block, you know, can they touch the letter A, do they know the letter A, you know, uh, this assumption that because she's non-speaking, non-verbal, I'm not even sure what the uh, right, right, right term is, beyond verbal, um, that uh, they're not thinking, you know, that they can't function, you know, uh, in the world. So uh, I remember at one point I thought, well, if she's a high vibrational person, maybe that's the best that quote I can help hope for, you know, in a sense, <laughs> you know, the, but um, uh, in 2016 or so, um, you know, some of the other parents listening, or you might've heard of a rapid prompting method or letter boards uh, that more of these um, uh, kids are using to, to communicate or learn to um, express or communicate what they actually do know. And so in 2016, we did embark on RPM um, and I was blown away. I mean, Sam is, uh, she's, she's very intelligent um, and uh, really knew a lot of things <laughs> that we took for granted, like standard education, you know, math and uh, addition, you know, um, multiplication, all those kinds of things. She, she knew how to do it and she was taking in information all uh, along. Uh, and as a side note, our, our oldest son too, he's quote, very limited verbally, um, but he has demonstrated that he does understand a lot more too with the letter words and can um, spell and is able to have deeper thoughts than we had uh, credited him for. So anyway, um, you know, we did that for a while, uh, but in, and so she wanted it to be taken out of school. She said, I don't mean treat it like a baby. And um, she was like in her last year of quote high school. And so um, I took her out of school, uh, homeschooled her for like a year. In 2017, though, so, um, you know, things start to get really challenging, much more challenging, it's like even more challenging for Sam. Um, oh, and I should back up a little bit, you know, between 2014, 2000, uh, uh, 16, 17 in that time frame, you know, I didn't realize it, but I was also being prepared for um, what was coming. Uh, and so I would get uh, these attunements, you know, they would, these beings would show up or the goddess would come and then attune, attune me, you know, or a dragon would come and then you're like, all right, now hold out your hand, you know, like, okay. So, uh, you know, they draw, <laughs> draw these symbols. I, I'm laughing because I've been there where I've literally been in similar situations and they're like, do this or do, and I'm like, okay. And you're yeah, like, I know. Yeah. You can feel the, 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 that they're benevolent, that they're warm and they have good intentions. You know, it's okay. You just know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And on that note, actually, I early on, um, like in 2012 ish or so, there were like these other galactic beings, you know, um, you know, they said there were Assyrians and one of them said they were like Arcturians um, and we want you to be our channel. And I was like, something doesn't feel right, you know, so that, those doors I didn't um, I didn't yeah. open. So yeah. uh, there is, you know, discernment with that just because some being shows up and you think that they're you know, there must be higher so that, you know, I'm going to do what they tell me to do. Doesn't always mean, you know, if, if I don't feel it in the heart, if I don't feel it in the body, like I don't, I'm not, I'm not doing it. Especially if you only yeah. feel it in your head, yeah. there's something wrong. Yeah. And channeling is like true channeling where you allow it being into your body is very no, dangerous. And I don't recommend anybody try that. Uh, I don't even do that. I've never done that. I've never allowed them to take over me. We just communicate telepathically or through energy connecting yeah. energetically um but yeah you got to be wary of that you don't give your body over to them but anyways continue yeah 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 no it's a, <laughs> it's a good side point to make because there are people that make that mistake just because oh well they say they're yeah. you know they're gonna uh you know download me with you know yeah. something and uh you know i'll you know it's like wait just take a deep breath and um 
see where it goes from there. So I, I absolutely agree. Um, but uh, yeah, so they, you know, were attuning me and doing all these things, you know, to me, I was like, okay, well, what do I do with this? I don't know. Um, uh, and meanwhile, you know, I, I would, I always had this inclination to want to draw something. Uh, so like, even when I was getting symbols, oh, it's sand would tune me to a couple of symbols in like 2011. Um, uh, and so I would always try and draw it. I had to draw it. There was some in inclination in me to draw it, even if it was on like on PowerPoint and I'm not quote an artist, I'm not trained as an artist or anything, but I always had this inclination to draw it, you know, um, and then in 2017, things really started to, to change. Um, and what I was noticing, um, like I would see this, I remember one time, you know, I was like seeing our universe, you know, it was like this ellipse, ellipsoid shape. Um, and it was like our 3D universe, uh, first, second and third dimensional harmonic universe, so to speak, in, the, in that language. Um, so, oh, and I didn't find out I was an indigo until 2016. So uh, January, 2016, I had uh, met someone um, uh, and she told me I was an indigo one. Uh, and uh, I remember telling her that Sammy had told me that um, she came in with 15 chakras, you know? And so when I told this woman, she said, yeah, she's right because we actually ex we actually live in a 15 dimensional universe and so our chakras are our connections into dimensions um and so uh i was like wow that's interesting um you know kind of put it aside and not knowing and i remember in late 2016 too i felt like my chakra cones the uh, density they were like dissolving you know so something was starting to happen uh and then in 2017 i saw our universe and then I, I saw like all these pillars coming down, you know, I was like, what in the world is going on? Um, and so I started hearing from this, uh, uh, I just call them the autist collective. Now, Susie Miller was calling them, the, she was the one that coined the term, the collective consciousness of the children. Um, but that's kind of broad because there are even new kids now that are coming in that are, aren't quote labeled autistic. Um, that are part of a, like another collective and what they're doing. So, you know, it's like in scaffolding, right? Yeah. Um, they come in in groups, yeah. Yeah, they come in in groups, you know, like uh, the kids diagnosed with ADHD, but they have a different energy. They're, you know, learning disabilities, you know, that's what uh, I was shown as well. They're kind of scaffolding the energy, you know, what, what, they, can, what they can hold um, to change the vibration um, and so that these higher vibrational beings, you know, could, could come in. Uh, anyway, so I started hearing from the autist, I just call them autist collective, just to, because they are a collective, there's a, a, a group of them as a soul group. Um, so they're like start, they're, they're star seeds as well, in a sense, and they're from um, way out in the cosmos as souls emanating here. And so are we as star seeds. But there are specific ones that seem to have come together for a soul agreement, you know, um, and I'll show an image later how they stay kind of coherent as a group. Um, and these are the, probably the older ones, the adult ones, you know, um, in this particular group anyway. Um, they started saying that we're moving to the next harmonic universe. And I was like, well, we're moving to the next harmonic universe. Uh, okay, well, I'm not sure exactly what that means. Yeah. Um, but, uh, okay. So, um, I did happen to find one website, um, called energetic synthesis at the time. And she was kind of talking about the same thing. We're getting ready to move the, to the next harmonic universe. Um, so they, uh, I remember in like May, 2017 or so, I felt that this urge that I need to do these, uh, a series on YouTube or put them and put them on YouTube. They were all for free at the time, you know, um, called Planetary Synthesis. So we met like every month um, uh, for six months, you know, and again, I still, in hindsight, I kind of understand more of what we were doing, but at the time, you know, I'm like, okay, whatever. Um, I'll just do, you know, what I'm being guided to do. And, you know, I would try and draw images then and I did these, did these presentations. Um, and when I started that, uh, this collective, 
uh, they started coming in through my brain stem and uh, they started attuning my um, neurology to their uh, frequency in a sense, you know, it's the only way I can say it. Um, and then I could feel all these other kids that are part of that group, like all over the world, you know, um, and they were, you know, coming in. So one of them was showing me like this, uh, this energy band that was going around uh, this first harmonic universe. Um, so our universe is organized in a sense into uh, what it went into the, it was like five harmonics. Um, so the first, second, third dimension is the first harmonic universe. Fourth, fifth, sixth dimension is the second harmonic universe. Uh, seventh, eighth, and ninth dimension is the third harmonic universe. And then the um, fourth harmonic un uh, fourth harmonic universe would be 10th, 11th, and 12th dimensions dimension. Um, that would be like where our, our avatar blueprint is. And then uh, there's the uh, 13th, 14th, and 15th dimensions, which are the morph morphogenetic fields. Uh, and so we were supposed to have a chakra into each of those dimensions, you know, that would connect us, to keep us connected um, to the cosmos, so to speak. Uh, and it directly connected us to um, the mother and, and the father in, um, you know, in a different way than what we understand. So I know this is, complex stuff uh, and I'll try and keep it simpler so interject if you have any questions uh, well, I think this is helpful this is why I invited you on because like I said this is next level so some of you watching this if you feel like you need to pause and rewind and listen to it again I recommend it uh, because it, sometimes it takes a few times listening to it but I think that the collective is ready to understand another level of why they're here and their energetic significance and their journey and their role in our ascension is really important. So you're bringing in that next level of information that I believe that we're ready for, which is why I am really honored to even be able to meet you and, and have you explain this on my channel for the, all of those families out there that I have been in communication with that are looking for guidance and, and, and more information. So please continue. And um, so far, I think you're doing an excellent job. So Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I really share. I mean, I was really very impressed with all you've done in a very short amount of time. But like, you went out there gangbusters. Um, really. Uh, <laughs> so really, I mean, kudos to you for. I mean, Thank with you. your kids and everything. I know it's not easy um, to do that. So anyway. Um. Uh. So what they meant was that the I thought like okay. Oh, and the other thing in 2016, sometime um, in meditation, you know, it was one of those moments where, okay, Sammy was like, all right, sit down and meditate. And I was like, okay. Um, and uh, during meditation, you know, she was like, all right, hold out your hands. And I held out my hands. And she put the 16th, 17th, and 18th uh, chakras, quote chakras, into my hands. And I was like, all right, well, what do I do with that? I don't know what to do with it. Um, you know, so uh, basically we were getting ready to expand into an 18 dimensional universe, uh, so to speak. Um, but we were existing in a 15 dimensional universe. And, you know, I was surprised to find out that there were people that actually knew about this already, you know, for a long time, um, that we existed, we were supposed to have 15 chakras. There were people that already knew that, you know? Uh, so um, we were getting ready to move that first harmonic universe, first, second, and third dimensions to the second harmonic universe of the fourth, fifth, and sixth dimensions. Uh, so that's what they were, that's what they were showing me uh, was happening. Um, so in uh, 20, the second half of 2017, that's what was kind of, is a preparation and then um, by 2018, the beginning of it or so, we had shifted up into that next uh, harmonic universe. So that means vibrationally, as you go up the dimensions, the vibrations of the frequencies get more refined and higher. Uh, so when we move that, then, you know, if you think back um, or in other people, right, you hear other people talking about the vibrations really different, you know, there's a lot more it seems like we're vibrating higher. Uh, and that's exactly what was uh, what was happening. So um, 
for Samantha, though, um, it became even more challenging. I mean, she became, I would say, in 2018 or so, like almost non-functional, where she couldn't even get out of bed. Um, she would uh, have to sleep on the couch. Um, and so I'd be sleeping in the living room with her. And she'd want the TV on all night, you know. Um, uh, and what I realized of what was happening now is that she was, uh, it made, when that shift made it easier for her to like leave her body, you know, and go further out into the cosmos, you know. And so um, the living room space and like the TV, it was like a way of uh, bringing her back, you know, like, anchor. yeah, yeah. She needed some sort of anchor because she was going way, way out. And there are other kids that I know that are, you know, doing the same. I know some of them traveled, Sammy, you know, as well. So they were going way, way out uh, into the cosmos um, and uh, opening, basically opening access points, you know, so to speak. So she was very, very non-functional uh, in 2018. And I remember like in June, 2018 um you know we were very concerned obviously uh but we weren't going to take her to the doctor because she's had really bad experiences with hospitals when we had to do any kind of uh, medical procedures or anything it got to a point when she got big enough she started refusing to go into the doctor's office because she her physically you couldn't force her you know um so she's had bad experiences, uh, really having to, to undergo anesthesia just to do teeth cleaning or some other exams. And, you know, we were really reluctant to uh, do that to her anymore. So we just kept um, going the best we could uh, under the circumstances. And the thing was, when she would go leave her body like that, go way out, um, her, her it's like the body, um, there was obviously you know, some spiritual connection still that keeps her body alive. But um, when she would go out, she, she, her body could go into like this flailing, um, uh, violent, uh, self-abusive kind of uh, stage where she, then she'd put her head through the walls and things like that, you know. So um, we'd have to hold her down or my husband would, you know, would hold her, you know, to keep her safe. And it was then that, uh, you know, I was having, seeing things happening, like either around her, uh, what was going on, why she was acting like that. Um, and so uh, I started drawing, you know, trying to capture what I was seeing. And I noticed that when I drew it, she would calm down, you know, so it was like some kind of transmission coming in, um, and so I, I started drawing a lot of things that was happening and capturing it uh, energetically. Uh, uh, and I remember in 2018 as well, like at one point I had to open a dragon chakra under her feet. Um, you know, it was one of those moments where, uh, and it's part of our, it's part of our light body. Like our light body is also have a uh, like a grid system into dimensions um, and it's also how we can expand our consciousness and be able to hold more energies it's through our light body we expand there's a consciousness expansion that takes place with our through our light bodies so um, even if the physical body can't handle it uh, um, so I opened this dragon chakra and I was like you know I don't know what I'm doing but that's what I feel like I have to do and um, that was one of the attunements I had received in 2016. Didn't realize it at the time because it was like, I just did it, you know. <laughs> I was like, all right, I seem to know what to do. <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, and that, uh, that, a dragon chakra is like a, an access into a deeper access into the cosmos. Uh, and what the autists said, uh, the uh, dragons are from their, you know, vantage point. And obviously my interpretation on um, my understanding is that um, dragons, so if you think about the mythology of a dragon, uh, they're known to breathe fire, right? It's their breath. Uh, and uh, a dragon kind of form is uh, a way of source kind of um, embodying uh, certain codes and things. So 
it's a way of carrying these codes to us. And um, so uh, there was a lot more dragons that uh, had, you know, started to come in. And I know a lot of people are feeling dragons or talking about dragons too. They're drawing dragons. Uh, children uh, are seeing dragons, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So there's, you know, there's, you know, you can even have a dragon body as a light body, part, part of your light body form. Um, but this is how, you know, codes are carried through. Uh, and so this dragon chakra is like an access um, in, into that. And, uh, you know, I only learned in the last couple of years or so that Sammy and I were um, like, we were sharing kind of, she was kind of sharing my light body. She was connected to my light body so that she could go out further. And then I was like um, a compliment uh, to her. Um, but as this, as we're now progressing, um, she's kind of individuating out and um, we have a different kind of connection. We have, both have like dragon chakras and we are communicating um, kind of differently now um, in a sense as she is, you know, kind of embodying herself. Um, but anyway, so, uh, so a lot of our work between 2018 um, and now has been uh, to draw and, uh, you know, I was drawing on like PowerPoint or any way that I could. And then uh, when Procreate uh, came along for it as an iPad app, it makes it a lot easier now uh, to do these drawings. So sometimes, I mean, I'm drawing frantically, especially when she was going through these stages where, you know, it was like, oh my gosh, banging her head and all kinds of uh, crazy things. Um, happening and so when I would draw it uh, she would sometimes calm down immediately like as soon as I started it she would calm down um, other drawings she comes in and she'll like um, show me an image transmit an image and um, you know I'll draw it and it doesn't come out exactly the way you know it gets transmitted um, but the drawing I noticed that it's like doing energy work uh, so I'm drawing and I add things to it, to make it coherent, to make it um, pleasing, let's say, quote, pleasing to the eye in some ways. Uh, and you can see a lot of our drawings um, uh, on our YouTube channel. I, we have a Patreon page where we I meet monthly for people who are interested in what we do. Um, and I draw a lot of you'll, things. You'll share, of those, you'll share those uh, with us, a little, a, a sample. A little bit. Yeah, minute, some of it. Minute, but we'll, we'll get there. But it, Susan, it, just so everyone's uh, understanding what you've said so far, it sounds like this this activation allowed her body, her soul, her essence to go farther into the cosmos to receive uh, information, downloads, whatever it is that she needed to do. Um, and so her yeah. physical body, as a result of that, um, had a reaction to the that of her not necessarily inhabiting that much of it, but because you two are connected energetically, by you drawing the information or the uh i guess the energy or the frequency or the codes coming through by way it would emit a frequency to her physical body because you're in the same perimeter you're connected or through a grid energy grid and it would calm her down so it sounds like there's um activation codes or light language within your artwork that not only helps her but i believe can help other people is that right with with the yeah uh, that's a beautiful yeah that's, embedded a, in it? yeah that's a beautiful way of of uh saying that um yeah that's part you know that's definitely a big big part of it uh so yeah i'm getting the, the download and somebody told me um they said uh you're like organizing the energy like me i'm organizing the energy by by drawing it um and kind of grounding it or making it uh kind yeah, of it filters through you in a way that we can see it and it's tangible for us and so sammy goes out there and gets it for you and then it, your, it goes through your filter comes out in a piece of art i think that's absolutely beautiful yeah and i think and i think that's what the attunements some of the attunements that i had gotten you know uh earlier was for i didn't realize it you know at the time but um so you know it's like you know i'm using my hands you know it's translating the energy um and uh uh, putting it on paper, you know, at other times, um, uh, the other piece, you know, that, that 
of how I had, had to cope with what was happening because a lot of it was happening so fast. It was coming in so fast sometimes. Um, I would uh, start, I started toning and using light language, just, you know, um, kind of more like a remembering, I would say, because I didn't know what else to do at times. You know, sometimes I didn't quite know what was happening. And so I noticed that when I started toning um, or using light language, it was like, uh, I was getting into the frequency of what uh, might might be happening, you know, and so then I would start seeing, okay, oh, this is this is what's going on, or I would see like, okay, there's something trying to come through, uh, and there's this like an energetic kind of barrier here or somewhere, you know, um, and so I, I would you know kind of remove it, you know, I was like, all right, I think we have to just kind of remove that, you know. Uh, and then I would see, you know, things, uh, you know, happening and then I could, I, I could, I could draw it. Uh, so, you know, I still walk around in my house at times when it's really intense. Uh, I'll be toning as I'm walking around because I don't know what else to do. You know, you're trying to function. Um, right. you know, I'm a mom with two adult kids who need, you know, a lot of assistance. And so, um, sometimes I'll just be walking around toning and trying to figure out what, until I can get the, the frequency of what of what is uh happening so um it made me learn to tone and speak all kinds of crazy sounds uh mm -hmm. at times you know yeah, um yeah yeah so you know i, I learned by trial by uh fire <laughs> uh yeah and um, so yeah go, go ahead one thing before we move on because i there's so much i don't even think we're going to cover everything in, in this one session we're gonna have to do a part two I think because there's so much that we need to talk about but going back you mentioned earlier um that that you know Sammy and many autist children have these outbursts and, and they oftentimes get in trouble at, at, at school because they're hitting or they're kicking or they're banging their head um can you go into your explanation or what or what Sammy has explained to you as to why that occurs because I know that there's couple of reasons for it I've talked about some but I'd love to get your perspective for everybody yeah well there's a few I mean there's a few there's a few things um you know that could be going on um first is that um they're energetically more sensitive you know you know that but what does that mean that means their sensory system is is different they have uh what I would say is an advanced sensory system you know something that we have lost as humans um is that they are made to be more sensitive uh so because what sammy has said is their sensory system is like their communication with source um in a sense you know and we talk about this idea that we are the expressions of source we are god you know as a source being well what does what does that mean it means that we should be in communion all the time with the source, the, the creator of everything. And so uh, what we experience is uh, directly kind of in communication with source. Um, and so they're made to be more, more sensitive in that, in that way. And that's why uh, the traditional therapeutic systems, while they may work for a little while and, you know, they work for some kids for, you know, for certain certain areas and things, um, it doesn't quote change their uh, their sensory system. At least for, with Sam and some of these other high vibrational autistics, it doesn't really permanently change them because uh, we're wired to be, you know, a certain way. And and this is where we get into this idea of um, being a soul expression right? That um, we're each different. We're each different and we're made to be different because when we add up our differences as a collective, then we're adding to the collective. We each have something to contribute to the collective. So uh, even among the autistics, quote, autistics and these other sensitive individuals, their sensitivities are different. You know, so even like occupational therapy, um, 
each child is is different. Some may have more sensitivity to smell. Some may have more sensitivity to touch. Some may have more um, uh, synesthesia, you know, the mixing of senses, you know, things like that. So that's, you know, that's part of it. So what does that mean when uh, they're more sensitive? So you imagine that there's all this going on in the cosmos. There's new access points coming in, opening up, you know, and so they could feel things going on way out in the cosmos that's coming, <laughs> you know. It, so when they talk about, um, okay, on this date or uh, this full moon, um, you know, there's people will talk about, you know, we're going to get this transmission or did you feel that? Well, they may be feeling it two weeks before, you know, it hits us. Um, there are also times when Sam, um, you know, is agitated unhappy about something there's something going on and I'll look and she she'll be hearing a sound that we may not hear uh so like one of them recently was like a, um uh it's from the met from the metagalactic core uh there was a transmission of, of green tara um which is a very much a heart energy it was like a brilliant emerald a liquid emerald goldish uh energy so that was being transmitted uh, for us uh, to stabilize the heart. Because one of the things that happened when, we, when that first harmonic universe was moved to the second harmonic universe, so the fourth dimension is our heart chakra. That's where we access the fourth dimension and where we really you know, are connecting to our soul. Um, so when we talk about heart and soul, it's that, it's that fourth chakra, right? And so... Uh, this is why all this talk I mean, to me the last few years everybody talking about soul it's all about soul living it's because now um we've moved to that second harmonic universe it's easier to access the soul uh in that sense in a physical in the physical body so those are some of the reasons there's you know things coming in from far out in the cosmos that we may not know about um they feel it they could feel it uh, you know, kinesthetically, they may be hearing sound, they may be seeing, uh, you know, if they're more sensitive visually, they may be seeing a uh, bombardment of uh, colors and lights and things that, um, you know, we don't, we don't see or we don't, we don't know about. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that was very clear. And, and, you know, imagine being in their, in their exact situation and, and experiencing all that and not having a way to process it or, or release it, or even understand it in certain circumstances for them, then they can't verbalize it. If, if they're nonverbal, they can't verbalize it. So, you know, think about, and this is a, a simplified metaphor, and those that know me know when I commun when I compare children to animals, that's because of love, because animals, I think, are just ascended themselves. So it's not yeah. an insult to compare dog. children to animals. But, you know, think about a, a dog who, you know, if they have some a pain in their body, you know, they're gonna bite their foot and and they're, you're think they're what what is he doing wait he's 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 trying to tend to his foot that hurts he's right. biting it, you know right. or they head press they push their head up against the wall you know they might have a neurological issue there or there's overstimulation so they are going to have behavior that looks odd to us but they're trying to work through that energy you know and a lot of these children have surges of energy they've told me they're like i don't know what yeah. to do with this energy that comes through so they they can't they can't sit still they got to move around right. they become overstimulated and they they don't know how to cope with it and the professionals working with them up uh, for a long time didn't either and i think now we're starting to get understand them more um, right. but it's people like you and the pioneers before you and and myself that are speaking out and trying to explain there's an energetic explanation for all of these behaviors that they have we just need to understand them a little bit more instead of medicating them or or saying that there's something wrong because they are so intelligent they are so advanced and i'd love yeah. for you to talk a little bit about um as well because i've said something very similar but i think again your way of explaining it is really um beautiful you know why they have the why they are less why i can't speak why they have a difficult time um, operate in their physical body because they like to remain closer to source so that they remain more pure. Uh, there, there's a reason why some of them on the spectrum that are a little bit more severe, we would call them where they don't have control of their body. There's a reason for it energetically. So 
can you explain that to everybody from your perspective? Uh -huh. a little yeah, bit? a little bit. Yeah, sure. Um, so they have different levels of, of connection to their physical body. So some of them may be um, connected uh, down to the heart. You know, they're, they're not willing to embody all the way down, you know, most of them, um, although some of them have, have embodied. But um, uh, these, quote, beyond verbal or nonverbal um, kids, uh, you know, they, um, it, it depends on, you know, again, if you think about the chakra system as like dimensions, it depends on how far they're, how far down they're connected uh, into their, into their bodies. And so um, uh, their neurology is uh, also different for, you know, for a variety of reasons, Sam uh, has had all the vaccines, you know, trial the vaccines, like I said, we were very traditional 3D people. Um, and she did say that affected her, it scrambled her neurology, but it also kept her from, um, it, you know, embodying uh, as well. So they're on a different system. They're connected to the physical body, but unwilling to um, connect all the way. And so the body, because it's like our soul and spirit coming through to connect to the body, uh, you know, in their various levels, even the star seeds, how, we're, how much we're embodied, you know, in a sense, but um, they're less, they're less so. So uh, Samia said they, um, she turned off some of her genes, right? So that she wouldn't, uh, she wouldn't conform to a 3D mindset. Um, they, they function more at an oversoul level than an individual soul level. So as a collective, they're, they're function. They're more functioning at a seventh, eighth, and ninth dimension, um, uh, and so they seem disconnected because, in a sense, they are. You know, and it's by purpose that they remain disconnected. And so their their neurology um, is, in a sense, purposely as from a soul perspective, and uh, uh, their neurology is um, uh, tuned to remain uh, detached and also remain connected to source. Does that make sense? Makes total sense, yeah. You know, it, it, I think this 3D reality or this realm or whatever you wanna call it is really difficult and challenging to be in regardless of how you choose to embody you yeah. know, these things that are coming in that I, we have the autist collective that came in as a pioneers, you know, sooner, much earlier when we were still really embedded in 3D because they they come in and they anchor light and they are here to shift the trajectory of 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 the co the collective consciousness of 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 humanity and and they have their their purpose but their challenge is not coming in all the way into the body uh for that reason they don't want to be in the dense body they're more likely to to accumulate karma and be uh targeted by dark entities and energies and um and uh, they forget their their connection to their higher self because of this reality. And then we have the uh, new earth children that are fully embodying as well, fully is not a hundred percent, but as much as possible now, because we finally reached a point in our ascension and the frequency on the planet that, and, and our bodies are increasing in density. We're bringing able to bring in more light. So more of them are coming in, but these children ha are having difficult, ch different challenges. You know, when, before my daughter was born, she came to me and she said, she told me who she was, what she was going to do, and that she needed my help. And I channeled her for a year, nine months to a year before I got pregnant and all throughout my pregnancy. And she's the one that taught me most of what I know. And mm -hmm. she would always tell me, don't let me forget when I'm bored. Don't let yeah. me forget. And I always thought what an odd thing to say. But what she was yeah. trying to tell me is I'm coming in all the way. And mm. so I am going to be in this 3d body in this density with with everyone else don't let the world take me don't let me become tainted and mm. don't let me get my mission yeah. and i always remember that to this day no matter what i always try to remind her who she is because it is challenging and i even see her struggle as an eight eight year old young girl with everything the influences yeah. she still struggles and i have to constantly i feel like i anchor her back down and 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 help guide her so no matter if it's her that's fully present or the autist collective that remain 
only allow a certain amount to come through so that they don't go through what she's going through. They both experience challenges. Yeah. And I think it's it's divine plan because it's dependent on what group that soul decides to come through is what, what their mission is. So I think mm -hmm. it's, it, it's, uh, it's not easy for any group right now. Right. Sure. Right. Definitely. Definitely. And I, I think, think that's one I, of the, no. Oh, the, the, one of the things that I learned, you know, is that, um, if uh, if that's your sole mission, like you can't you can't therapize them out of it. You know what I mean? Like with Sam, you know, we couldn't no therapy or anything could detract her from what she was physically made to do, you know, and um, I think that's I think that's a big lesson for 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 everyone. You know, even with my younger son, uh, who's 22, um, you know, and watching him grow up you know, I realized like this school system, it's not good for anybody. You know, I mean, he didn't have bad, quote, bad experiences, but, uh, you know, he was born in 2001 and, you know, noticed, you know, they're in, born into a different energy on the planet that you can't, you couldn't, I couldn't make him do anything that was not in alignment for him. You know, you can't, uh, it's not like these old days where you force kids, uh, to become a doctor just because you think, you know, they're going to make a lot of money and they override their own inner natural desire uh, as a soul, you know, and, you know, we have to look at that and say that that has caused a lot of people pain and, and suffering. And even if it's not on the surface, like we're seeing it now, I think people are starting to flip out uh, in a sense because everything that was hidden or buried deep inside is coming out all those emotions that people were made to suppress and they push drugs and alcohol and uh you know sexual pleasure all these things to distract people and um to get that little bit of of pleasure that they're really seeking which can only come from your connection to the to the divine you know your own soul connection to who you are and and to be accepted you know and so this is what uh, we have been seeding, you know, all along. And we're at this stage now where we're making this next, we're making this next uh, jump, um, so to speak. So I don't know if you want me to talk about 4D and change in density. <laughs> yeah, um, well, yes, we'll get to that too. Um, but I think you made it an extremely important point there. Uh, and I want to talk about that really quickly because I get yeah. a lot of parents, countless parents. The reason they even sought me out, this was five, six, seven years ago, because they had their child was just recently diagnosed with autism. They just had their, you know, you know, 12 month these things. And next thing you know, this happened and they were, you know, can you heal my child? I got this all the time. Yeah. And of course, I, I, any normal or, you know, evolved energy healer will never promises to heal anyone. And we explained that we help the body heal itself. Um, but but I would always, I'm always big on free will. So I'd always say to the parents, well, let's see what your child actually wants. Uh, because maybe they don't want to be healed. Maybe they're uh, this way for a reason. Yeah. And that I started my journey and really diving deep into all of this. And they don't, and what I learned was they're they're this way for a reason and they need to be this way. And so we we and I love that you. I don't love, but you went yeah. through the same journey with your daughter, where I remember you speaking about you were you want you were that mom that was like, I want to heal her, I gotta fix her, I gotta fix her. And then to then so you finally realized, no, she's not broken. This is yeah. how she's coming in to do her mission. And that's how so many of them are. And unfortunately, the population looks at them as there's something wrong with them and oh, you poor thing, let me help you. But in reality, this is their choice, this is how they're doing what they need to do, and we shouldn't look at them as oh i'm so sorry for you this is right. this is what they've chosen to do right right and i mean i've even um you know when it was uh really hard uh you know some people you know would say well you're too open you know you're too open you got to turn it off you know turn it off you could tell the universe you know to turn it off you know uh you know not right now uh and you know what it's like no you you can't i mean i could wish that but again, like if Sammy is, you know, doing something, you know, like right now, you know, she's still in bed because she's up late, you know, in the middle of the night. Sometimes she's doing energy work. Sometimes she's doing, she's doing stuff, you know, um, 
it can't, you can't make somebody fall or go to sleep. You know, that's impossible. Uh, yeah. So uh, it was like, well, I, I could wish that, you know, this could turn off. I could turn this off. Uh, and again, you know, must be my sole mission too, because we're some kind of, we're somehow collaborating, you know, <laughs> the human me wants to turn it off and say, all right, this is too much right now. Um, but, uh, you know, it's not, um, if it's not in alignment, then, uh, then it's not, it's not going to happen. And, uh, it takes so many. Yeah. It's, it's It's not up to me and you and the parents, it's up to them. That's what they came here. And they just, they chose your, their mom and dad for a reason or their caregiver. However, they end up with you because you had a contract. I mean, you have a contract clearly with Sammy to be her caregiver, her support, her confident, confidant, her friend, her, like every, her mentor. And, and now you're speaking out on behalf of her. Um, and I, I, I want to get into, I really want to get into, uh, this, you, you have this on your website that autistic autists are high vibrational emissaries from the seven higher heavens. I'd love to get into that and the dark matter, and then maybe show some of your artwork. Can you, but first I want to go there. Can we talk about that a little bit? Sure. Okay. Well, the seven higher heavens. Yeah. She said, um, seven higher heavens is like, uh, the, um, uh, like the 19th to the 25th quote dimension. It's my understanding. Somebody, some other people might have a different understanding. So it's like the 19th, 20th, 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, and 25th. Yeah, that's seven. Um, that's the seven, the seven quote higher, higher heavens. Uh, and we're not talking about dimensions as in, you know, the dimensions that we think of as here, you know, it's kind of different, but um, it seems to be a field of, uh, you know, God's source. And um, it's like a hub into the, into the omniverse is my understanding of it now with the way I would look at it. So the omniverse meaning, you know, there's much more beyond uh, what we know here. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's like a field of, um, consciousness and there are many vast beings at that level and uh many of the others other starseed souls are probably from there as well honestly or even beyond you know i was telling sherry a little about about this before that um as souls if we're outside of time and space then we're actually emanating from somewhere out in the cosmos and um, we're sent forth from here. So this autist collective, though, they're operating as a collective, they're kind of operating as a collective consciousness from the seven higher heavens level. Uh, and by doing that, they, they were able to open um, these other, these other uh, access points now, so to speak. So by being on the planet, um, right, if there's something way out there, if there's a, um, if there's information and codes coming out, coming to us from out in the cosmos, there has to be someone to make it physical and human. There has to be someone here who can receive that uh, quote signal. Uh, and so, one of the things that I was shown is that. Um, even though they're, they're not really connected to their physical bodies, they're physically here, you know? And uh, so we have like an oversoul matrix and then there's also a, a personal soul matrix. So the personal soul matrix, you know, kind of looks like, like a star to me and there might be like other, like many fractal spaces in it. Um, so, and, and as star seeds, we have the same thing. So, um, it's like within that soul matrix, there might be an area where you're you're tuned to that frequency or that energy that energy transmission, and so you're like receivers, um, you know, to be able to to receive it. Uh, the seven higher heavens um, also seems to be where, uh, like the diamond suns of our uh, genetic material comes from. Um, the transmissions come come from there, and again, there's actually more beyond, you know, even that. But um, 
if you think of source having um, that the cosmos has uh, a sort of organization to it in a sense you know some people say well once you get out you know it's just all light there's just points of light um, but uh, I would say well there has to be some kind of organization to the cosmos in a sense because otherwise we wouldn't be organized like how are we sound and light coming together there's something that has to be organized you know there has to be some kind of structure you know for us to be um in this in this in this matter realm um i know that's not a clear answer it's just one of those things where it's it's a field you know um and uh you know so that's the seven higher heavens and some say we ex we have been existing in the seven lower heavens and we're supposed to mirror you know so that's like the macro in uh, a field into the macrocosm and then um the autists actually that also connected us into what we might call the seven micro heavens uh i can show an image of of that um but uh yeah what was your other question this oh the dark matter um is that clear enough at this point yeah that makes sense yeah yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, the 16th, 17th, and 8th, 18th quote dimensions, uh, like Sammy, you know, handed me these chakras, uh, um, access into uh, dark matter, um, so to speak. And um, they're more like 16th, 17th, and 18th dimensions are more like sound fields. And um, it's from like the mother, the cosmic mother, as I would call her, uh, opening into dark matter is, is a real game changer because, you know, dark matter has always been there. It's part of our, um, what makes up our reality, what holds our reality together. So Sammy had been trying to tell me about this for years, you know, she would talk, tell me about the is not space. You know, there's a is not space where there's like a, like a photo negative of you. If you remember, if some of you are old enough to remember, like when we used to develop film <laughs> uh, in a dark room, um, you get this photo negative, right? And so um, uh, it's like the quote negative spaces, not negative as in bad, but uh, the void. So, um, Again, kind of thinking, you have to kind of think kind of backwards. So if you are uh, a soul that's beyond time and space, then uh, how does that soul come through into uh, a dense, a denser, quote, reality? You know, because this is kind of density, um, even from the 12th dimension kind of coming down, you know, you're coming down in density to be here. Uh, uh, and that's dark matter. Without dark matter, you couldn't have these separate vibrations. You couldn't have like a separate body that's me and that Sherry. Um, it's the it's the space in between the notes. So if you look on a keyboard, in between, so there's a note and then there's another note. How would you be able to differentiate one note from another? Well, it's dark matter that creates that space for that particular frequency to even exist is really how you have to have to look at it. So we have a dark matter template as our physical body and even our organs have a dark matter template. So Sammy had once said um, uh, that uh, we have this dark matter matrix or template uh, that's created and then um, it, it creates the space for the light to come through, right? And so the light comes through and that's our physical matter. That's who we, that's who we are. And so now we can even imagine that, you know, we're sound as well because we're accessing into 16th, 17th and 18th dimension. Um, so uh, the archons quote um, these, I don't know, multidimensional uh, dark forces for lack of a better term, you know, have, have known about dark matter. And so part of the importance of dark matter is not just our form, but our consciousness is also seated, can be seated in dark matter, uh, particularly the 16th dimension. So 
um, there are belief systems that are seated in that 16th dimension uh, that has been operating our quote collective consciousness in a sense. And um, so it's even that, yeah, I use this model, the, the example, a lot of uh, our economic system, a model of scarcity, you know, that uh, there's not enough resources and so we value things that are scarce, right? So gold, they say, oh, there's only a limited supply of gold. And so the price goes up and down because you, if you control the supply of it, then it, if it's more in demand, then the price is gonna go up, you know? Um, so that's been kind of operating collective consciousness. And so that is being, um, uh, we can delete those consciousness seeds in dark matter. And what the autists recently said is they have seeded the um, dark matter uh, templates for uh, the new consciousness, which is more based, which is based on not scarcity, but abundance. And, um, uh, uh, and that we have to value things that enhance life, that are life enhancing, clean water, clean energy, clean air, all these things that um, will become part of our foundation for our economic system going forward. Uh, and, and unless it's seated in dark matter, you can't have permanent change. So that's one of the significances of, uh, of dark matter. The other thing interesting that they recently showed me is, uh, I was shown is that, um, so when the egg is fertilized, right? And you, to make up your form, to birth you that uh, that imprints right into dark matter. So that zygote, that fertilized egg is imprinted into dark matter and it's still there. So um, the potential for the self healing, you know, if we can access that um, and our genetic, correct genetic blueprint or a cleaner uh, genetic blueprint is, uh, you know, is exciting. So this is a this is a real game changer uh, going forward. Any other? It absolutely is, Susan, and <clears throat> that's why I wanted you to talk about the dark matter because I think that's where we are right now in this mm -hmm. ascension process, and, and a lot of what the autist collective is here to show us, and 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 the others the uh, the others that have followed in in various other uh, soul groups, right? That we absolutely have the ability through co creation, through intention and belief. Uh, to shift anything that we want but when we're in this this matrix of lack of and gluttony and focusing on the things that we don't really need you know the materialistic side enhanced through the drugs and the alcohol and all the other distractions like you mentioned it has been quite easy for them to distract us manipulate us and program right. us but at the end of the day right we are ascending we our density is shifting we're going into higher dimensional fields they and they are helping us do that in so many ways so that we can wake awaken each one of us individually and then collectively we co-create what it is that we want and and, and right. not what we don't need and they no longer can control us anymore and i think that is very scary for them because they see that is that's what's happening and they're losing control which is another reason why they have attacked the children uh yeah. so much over the, mm -hmm. especially over the last 30 years um, but let's let's share a little bit of your artwork, Susan, before we go, because we've already passed an hour. But I really oh, want to yeah. show some of your pieces first, and uh, because I think it's important for people to see at least a sampling of of some of the pieces that you have created. Well, yeah, I'm just gonna uh, share a couple of messages uh, like that that I put on social media um, from Sammy, or just you know, just a couple of quick things here. Um, While you're pulling that up. Um, I'm going to put your links for everything below the description. I highly recommend anyone watching this go on your website and go on your YouTube channel. There is hours and hours of information that is that is important and relevant right now, um, whether you have a child with autism or not. So I highly recommend you have so many great resources, Susan, and you put so much time over the years in creating these podcasts that are absolutely ex exceptional. So I'm going to put that link below and I highly recommend anyone watching this if you want more you know, more Susan, I want to hear more. Go to her YouTube channel because there's a lot more that she has to say. So go ahead, yeah. Susan. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And uh, 
yeah, um, you know, I was doing some private sessions, um, but yeah, I just don't have the time. So yeah, the main the main way that we're doing any kind of lives and things are through is through our Patreon channel, uh, and then we do a meditation at the end of the presentation um, to keep up with what's happening. But uh, this was something in 20, 2019 that's uh, you know was transmitted. This is future Sammy. <laughs> I was like, okay, um, represents future Sammy uh, twenty nine forty A D, so to speak. Uh, at least from the way that we're connecting, um, uh, at least the way we're tracking time right now, because uh, as you know, it's spiral time, right? Um, past, present, future all ex coexist uh, simultaneously. Uh, and this future, Sam, said we do make it um, out of here. You know, we do make it past the stage, but this decade of 2020 is um, the most uh, the most difficult. Uh, and interesting, she said that... Um, uh, the the biggest uh, I asked her is there going to be a World War Three and she said no but the biggest challenge we face uh, is bioweapons <laughs> this is a decade and I was like yeah yeah um, so that's one of them um, so this you know I do kind of quote channel messages from our energy because we see direct messages sometimes long messages from her when she wants um, but this is just a um, like a snippet. A social media posts. So before there was consciousness, there was omniscient, omnipresence. Uh, this is the seed of sentience. All creation has an aspect of this sentience. Um, so this is kind of what we're merging now is what we would call consciousness in the mental kind of way. And then sentience, um, the inner, the inner knowing, the physical knowing. I mean, I think that's what animals have is this sentience that they're designed a certain way and they know um, without thinking uh, who they are and what they are. Uh, so that's kind of what that means. I thought this was interesting. I forgot about this one um, from a, a few years ago. She says, I am not nonverbal, beyond verbal or non-speaking. I speak the original languages of God. Humanity oh, I love that. has become deaf. Time to wake up. Um, so yeah, again, that, you know, what do we call them? What do we, you know, I, said nonverbal or beyond verbal non-speaking some people prefer these different terms you know right now uh and again it's just whatever resonates for you uh at the time uh this one was uh, interesting so i asked her saying what does embodiment mean to you um it's for soul and spirit to be in divine union with the physical so that i can direct the flows of energy into form and structure which is harmonized and in service to heaven and earth so yeah, moving into that direction of uh, co-creating that's harmonized um, for, for all the earth and all living beings. Um, so these are flowers that I drew as she's um, uh, blossoming, you know, that's kind of sometimes how I see it. Uh, and so when I do it, when I draw some things too, she, I do, I do things to, to help her as well. Oh, this was a recent one. There's no mental and emotional body. So she says, there's no mental and emotional body. There's only an information processing body. The human is a sensory organ of the cosmos. Uh, and that really shifts, you know, your perception of yourself um, and how you belong to the cosmos and are the part of the fabric of the cosmos. So this one I had thrown in, um, I put in, uh, the autist showed me this like in a couple of years ago. Uh, it's an 18 pointed star, but their full star that they operate from as a collective consciousness to be coherent as a collective is a 5,832 point pointed star. Uh, and that's 18 to the third power, which funny numer numerologically, it also adds up to 18. Um, this one is something that the uh, autists uh, showed me as well uh, in 2019. So this opening would be like the 13th dimension. And so we share this uh, chakra, 13th chakra, so to speak, with the earth. And it accesses into the mother arc gateways. And if you go through the mother arc gateways, um, they showed me these seven um, micro consciousness unit universes, uh, what we just call the micro seven micro heavens now, and this is what actually feeds into the, the quantum field. So this is pre-quantum field energy um, or transmissions. 
And um, this year they said, we're gonna be uh, getting more into what, um, what these transmit each of these somehow, but uh, you know, we'll see, we'll see how that goes. But uh, you know, there's a, a complete replenishing process of uh, the cosmos um, that is happening. Um, and like I was saying this Sherry before our interview, I was excited to watch um, Lowell Johnson and his uh, journeys into, uh, into the you know, Middle Earth, uh, into the inner Earth, because some of the things that uh, he was seeing there, like we were seeing like these dragon chakras opening in the middle of uh, the Earth even, um, that connects into uh, the deeper cosmos. So I was like, wow, there's, that sounds like proof to me that, you know, things were been happening, you know, all along what we were, some of the things that we were seeing. So. Yeah. Very- I, well, I think we're just connecting right now, right? Everyone is getting their information and gathering and it's all yeah. coming together as one beautiful uh, package. So I, I think it's, it's, I think we're right on track and I love Sammy's original picture that or the first one you showed of her when she said we made it, you know, this is me. Um, yeah. and I, I truly believe we've already made it. Um, I've seen the future. I think it's beautiful. We just were in this period of where we, it's a lot of work and we're healing and we're awakening and it's a process, but, uh, I think the autist collective is here to, to help guide us as, as some of our greatest teachers. So they shouldn't be looked upon as, as, you know, unfortunate, um, uh, souls that are being punished for some karma. I mean, I've heard it all, like they did something bad in a past life. So they're, they're having to come back and, and live in this, in these bodies and, and to, to repay karma. I don't believe in any of that. And so I, I'd love to have you come back, Susan. We'll have to wrap up for today, but if, yeah, if you're willing, I'd love to have you come back and do a part two, because there's so much more to this conversation. And I think that this is a really important topic right now that we should, we should uh, come back again and share some more. Um, but for, for now, I, I thank you so much for coming on today and sharing everything that you've shared so far. I really appreciate you and, and your Sammy and your journey together. Um, is that I will put the links below, but do you want to tell everybody real quick how they can, the way, different ways that they can uh, get in contact with you or, or just uh, to your website and your YouTube channel? Is there anything else? Yeah, well, we have our Patreon channel, um, which is uh, www.patreon.com forward slash moon oros one. Um, so you can contact us there. You can follow us on, um, I do some posting on Facebook at times and uh, Instagram. On, I'm just under susan.m.oros. Um, yeah, I just, you know, I post when I can, you know, depending on what's going on with uh, in our household. Uh, I share things, but I do uh, try to do some blogs. So if you want to uh, subscribe to our uh, email on our um, on our website, uh, I try to d- do some blogs and uh, share that. The videos of our the uh, a portion of our um, Patreon videos are up on YouTube for free. Uh, you just don't get the the meditation part um, unless you're a, a subscriber on our uh, Patreon. But um, yeah, right now, you know, it's hard for me to do sessions. Uh, and interesting, I most of the sessions that I have done is with parent with people who are uh, who are star seeds doing doing activations. <laughs> you know, believe it or not, I've had a few parents that I've worked with here and there. Um, but really appreciate all that you're doing. I think this is a great platform, and all these you're gathering lots of different information from different star seeds and, and bringing it together. Uh, so I think that's it's really really priceless and and valuable what you're doing because i mean it sounds like you're very very busy yourself so thank you very much and yeah i would love to come back uh because i think i can if somebody asks me more direct questions i can simplify you know some of the answers otherwise i can just keep going and just talk about you know all these woo. <laughs> uh, yeah, good, good, good point for those of you watching please put your questions in the chat and then I'll write them down. And then when we come back, we'll have some questions we can answer as well. We'll go through some yeah. and some more deeper explanation of certain things and challenges that I'm sure parents would love to hear um, you talk about. So we'll wrap up for today, but thank you again. Yeah. And thank you for everybody to everybody watching this. I hope that you got something valuable out of it. I'm sure you did. And until next time, bye everybody.